Hello, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to build a state machine with three states. Let's create a new project. I'll come over here, new project. I'll create a folder for the project. I'll call this simply state machine. And um, I'll call the project state machine as well. My board is STM32F4. One one VET. This one over here, OK. And the CM6, I'll select the core and the device. I'll select the startup, OK. Right. The target is the name of the board. And over here, Gonna have up. And I'm gonna create another source group which I shall call drivers, and I'm gonna bring our UART driver here. Right. So this is our last UART project. I'm going to copy the UART.h and .c files. And then I'm going to put them in the folder of the new project. I'm going to minimize this. I'll come to drivers. And I want to include my UART files. Right. And I'm going to come to application. And I'm going to create a main function here, add new item, and then I'll call this main like this. Right. So we're going to create a state machine with three states. We have an image of it. So that's what it's going to look like. We, we would have state A, state B, state C, and we're going to sort of have an input or a pseudo input, I should say, known as clock. And when clock equals two, state A would run. When clock is equals five, state B would run. When clock equals nine, state C would run. These are just, this is just a random example, but it would help you get the idea of state machines. And each state would have its own execution function. So if state A, if state A is active, there's gonna be a particular function or subroutine that will be executing if state B is active. A different subroutine will be executing and if state c is active a third different one will be executing and we're going to use state machine to create this right um so i'm going to come over here and um i'll start off by including the i'll include our uart module we can simply do include uart.h and once that's done int main open close and we're going to have a while one over here right so i'm going to use an a num type to define our state here i'll simply come here and say a num state open close and we're going to have state a This will be zero. And we have state B. And state C. Right. So enumeration or enum is a user defined data type in C. It is mainly used to assign names to, you know, integer constant. The names make the program easy to read and maintain. So basically, if I want to say zero, I can simply say state A. If I want to say one, I can simply say state B. If I want to say two, I can simply say state C. That's what we're using enum for. And we can use type def to, to rename this. I'm going to say type def over here. So if we want to create a num type, we would always have to type a num state and then give the variable name. But I want to rename th 
this phrase, if you may, enum state to a new name, a single name. So I'll say enum state over here. I'll rename it to state types. Oh, state type, that's the convention. Like this. Right. And I'm going to have... I'm going to create a number of functions. First of all, I'm going to create an array of pointers to um to function names. Let's say we're going to have... I'll put a function prototypes here before I create them. So I'll say void state a function. Void state b function. These are the function prototypes. And we said we're going to have states A, B, and C. So a typo here. Right. And we can come down here and say void state C function. And um, I'm just going to define the functions down here. Open and close, close the um, the while one loop. Then we come down here. We'll define a function, just an empty function for now. And then state B function, another empty function. Open, close. State C function, another empty function. Open, close, delete the semicolon here. Right, so now I'm going to create an array of pointers to the named functions that we have. Uh, and I'll say static. Static void. Into bracket. Pointer. State table, I'll call it. Like this. And void over here this equals this will point to our state functions we have three of them I can simply copy them over here there's the next one for B and the third right for C like this and we put a semicolon here great so once that is done okay we can sort of create a variable of state types which I will call current state we'll create a number of variables here actually I'll say static state type I call this current state and I'll create another variable here static remember we said the input is going to be clock something that we call clock and based on the clock the number of clocks a particular state is run so I'm gonna say and I'm gonna create another variable here called clock like this right so once we've written this file we can initialize our state machine by creating a state machine init, init function. I'll come down here and say void state machine init over here like this. Open and close. And we can initialize the current state. Let's say current state equals state A like this. And we can initialize the clock to start from zero. Clock equals zero, like this. Right, so this is the initialization. We can put a prototype up there with the rest. Put this over here. Put a semicolon there, like this. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to remember the um. 
the the init function would sort of start the ball rolling right so the init function will set a state to state a and then by setting it to state a then state a becomes the first one the current state to run right so what is state a gonna do back to our image over here we said if clock equals 2 we run state a it is state a state a we recognize state a or we call state a when clock equals 2 and state b when clock equals 5 state c when clock equals 9 okay so we just apply the same thing here and i'm gonna come over here to state a function and i'm gonna say if if clock equals 2 I'm gonna come here and say if clock equals 2 then we wanna change we wanna change from state A to state B and state B to state C then we can say set current state to state B like this And let's say the output is simply going to be a print statement that we want to print. So ordinarily, you would have a proper function execute here. You would have, ideally, you would have like your algorithm here. Once, if you are using a state function, one state could capture the data. Another one processes the data. A third state would output it, let's say, to a liquid crystal display. Right. But over here, we're just saying each state is simply going to print something. I'll say this is this is the execution of state A. Simple as this. Okay. Right. So that's what is going to happen when we're in state A. How about state B? How about state B indeed? So state B is going to do the same thing. State B will check whether it's, it's time to run. We said clock should be 5 for state B. So if clock equals 5 over here, then first of all, state C would set current state to state C. State B will set current state to state C. And once that is done, it would perform its execution as well. And its execution can be something as simple as printf. This is the execution of state B. New line, current return. right so we've got to execute state c now we said state c is when clock equals nine so come over here if clock equals nine open close and state c would link back to state a so I'll say current state equals state a and once that is done we'll print something here print f This is the execution of state C. Sorry about that. Like this. Right. So we can call these functions or we can we don't need to call these functions individually. We simply need to start the state machine and increment the clock our clock variable right so we simply need to come to um, our main function here and set the state we're going to start off by simply passing current state to our state table here so come over here and say state table and index current state right and this is how we start it and we can simply increment clock. 
clock plus plus because clock needs to be two before the first state state a runs and then its value needs to change on and on and on so let's build and see what we have thus far i'll click over here to build it's built successfully I click here to download onto the board i've not set my board sorry about that come over here debug sd link debugger settings flash download reset and run ok and then ok click here to download so it's downloaded successfully let's see terra term what we've got gonna select i've got this over here i'm gonna reset my board okay let's see what we have Controller. right so the reason it's not right in anything is of course we forgot to initialize the usat module as you can see in our main function we don't have in it anywhere here i'm gonna say usat2 in it calling this from our uart driver once that is done i'll click to run or to build first build download onto the board now let's see terra term okay this is the execution of state a this is the execution of b and c as you can see they are executing but it needs to be in a loop and the reason it's not executing continuously is because we have to reset clock to nine remember clock plus plus if we are to print clock clock is probably in the millions at this stage so once we come to clock nine and we set current state to state a we want to set clock to zero to start counting from the top i'm going to say clock equals zero over here click over here to build download onto the board let's see terra term um i'm gonna reset and this is what we have right so we are um, we sort of executing these three tasks using a state machine and like i said state a could be an elaborate function that would execute something more very important rather than just printing text over here right so this is what we have um this this lesson is getting long we're going to continue this in the next lesson what we're going to do is we're going to initialize the um the cystic time and sort of get a timestamp of execution of each task and see whether we can actually um know exactly when a particular task is running and whether we can sort of write we can sort of um plan on paper um for the 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 execution time of each state whether we can pre-configure the execution time of each state so that we can have a predictable time that we know state a is always going to run state b is go going to run at this time of course from now now you can see that of course we can predict the time since we have a variable called clock and we said that clock equals two run state a at equals five run b equals at clock equals nine run c if clock was actual clock then of course we know exactly when each state runs so we're gonna set on a timer and try to get that and um if you don't understand all i just said you need not worry and i'll see you in the next lesson